define operating room efficiency is the, is the time that the operating room is not available to do other stuff. Getting the patient into the room, setting up the room, intubating and positioning, performing the operation we're not gonna worry about here. This is all the other stuff. So why? is efficiency so important to us. There's a number of things that efficiency does. And obviously, revenue is, is an obvious one. The more things we can do per unit time, the greater revenue that we can generate. But I also want to spend a few moments talking about quality and success, because efficiency actually can help to dictate those things as well. When we look at quality, you know, efficiency, if we define it as not doing things faster, but creating uh, a greater attention to detail, a systematic approach to mistake proofing. You know, when we go into an operating room to operate, that is just a few hours of our day. These people in the room who are there to help us out could work with 20 or 30 surgeons over the course of the week. And if they have to do things different every single time, the potential for mistakes is enormous. And we get frustrated with that, but it's not their fault. We're asking them to do things different every single time a new person walks into the room. So if we can create some efficiency, some standardization in the process, we can actually create more mistake proofing and reduce the potential for errors for our patients. There are hospitals that we think are bad hospitals because our on-time starts are horrible and we're always being delayed and the staff is never, <coughs> never there when I need them. And being able to get in touch with somebody is a pain. They're not worse hospitals. They're just less efficient. The post-operative problems, the nursing care could be identical, but we think of those facilities as worse facilities just because they're less efficient. So by building efficiency, you can actually improve your procedure credibility and branding, which then creates a greater competitive advantage. That actually leads to the higher revenue and long-term security. So efficiency significantly influences success, both in terms of patient quality care, revenue, and, uh, and, and procedure credibility. There are two kinds of activities that happen in all operating rooms. There are external activities and there are internal activities. External activities are those things that can be done while the operating room is actively engaged in something else, some other surgical procedure. So a nurse charting something in the computer is an external activity. The, the whole operating room shouldn't come to a screeching halt every time somebody has to type something into the computer. Internal activities have to be done while the operating room is down. Mopping the floor is an internal activity. You have to do that while the patient's out of the room. That's not something you can do while the patient's in the room. Task overlap. You know, most operating rooms work in series. And this is just the tradition, the, the history of operating rooms. You have four people that work together to do one thing, and then when they finish it, they go to do another thing, and then when they finish it, they go to do another thing. If instead of doing things in series, if we did them in parallel, if we said, you know what, Draping the back table takes about as long as, as, as draping a robot, which takes about as long as it takes to go get a patient. Let's each one person have a task and just do them at the same time. What happens is everybody finishes at about the same time. In an operating room, we ask for things a lot. Can I have, can I please, can you? We ask an average of two to three times a minute for something, which over the course of you know, a day doesn't seem like a whole lot, but if every time you ask for something, they have to react to you, and it takes them 10 to 15 seconds. That adds up to literally hours at the end of your day of people just responding to your needs. And listen, if you're like me, you're not complicated. You do it the same way every single time. They shouldn't have to think about this. They should be able to anticipate it. In your operating rooms, make a concerted effort to look at the order in which you need things and guide your teams to do things in the order in which it's needed, not in the order in which it is most geographically proximal. Ports are placed, robots being docked. One of the important things here that I would tell you, especially uh, for folks uh, in the private practice setting, do not let your team dock your robot for you. Be a part of the docking process. Poor preparation. People are not gonna act on these things unless you get them to be a part of a team. If they're not prepared to do this, if they're not expected to do this, if the OR management isn't involved in this, then this can't happen. Lack of teamwork, pit crew mentality. The other problems that we see, lack of standardization. Different equipment, different stuff for every single surgeon who walks into the operating room. This is an absolute, absolute disaster. Improper storage, this is a huge problem. You know, when you ask for, you know, they put in an instrument and it's zeroed out. You go, I need a new, you know, Maryland bipolar. And the person disappears for what seems like 14 hours. And they come on back into the room. You're like, well, where'd you go? And like, well, I had to go down the hallway into the storage area, but it wasn't there, so I had to leave. I had to go down the elevator. I had to go over to the other storage area. I got my car, I went across the street. And you're like, good Lord. 
You want a just-in-case box. You want stuff to be stored as physically close to where you use it as possible. Store them efficiently, standardize things, create a crew mentality, prepare properly. All these things are critical to efficiency. The common theme amongst all of this really is standardization. We want to standardize information, good communication at all critical points. Don't forget, you're sitting at a console with your head buried in there, and if you shout out to the world, I need a new Marilyn, nobody knows who you're talking to. Standardize your tools, only what's necessary and correct. Don't open all sorts of extra just-in-case stuff. Standardize the roles and have a problem-solving cycle. You can't be the only one figuring out problems. Involve your team. Make it standard at the end of the day that it's not just like, man, that went horribly bad. I would caution you not to try to do all of these things. If you try to change the entire way your operating room works all at once, there will be a giant revolt and this whole thing will go into the trash. You want to pick one thing. You want to say to yourself, what part of this process is causing me the most pain? What involves the least change the way things are currently done? What's going to have the greatest impact with the smallest amount of effort? Start there and then step by step add in those things that are most relevant to you. If you can't do all these things, that's fine. Just pick the ones that will work for you. Even pieces of this puzzle are better than no puzzle at all. And lastly, I would tell you that this is not just a talk. This is actual reality. We've implemented this in now almost 50 hospitals around the United States with reproducible, sustainable, and dramatic outcomes. I would strongly encourage you to go back to your operating rooms and look at these processes and figure out how you can implement them because it can be done, it is being done, and you should be able to do it because you'll be the ones who will benefit from it.